Hi guys, good day. This is me again, Sir Jiggs. And in today's session, we will be learning on how to solve quadratic equations by extracting square roots. So by the way, this is one of the ways that we can actually solve for the roots of quadratic equation. And as for me, this is the simplest one. However, the only problem is that this method is not always applicable to all quadratic equations. And there is one condition that we need to meet so that we can actually say that such quadratic equation can be solved using this method. And if you're asking for that condition, it is something that you will learn in a few. So for those people who already knew about this method, then this might be a great umber fresher. And for those who did not, then I am here to teach you. So the method of solving the quadratic equation that can be written in the form x squared is equal to k is called extracting square roots, where in your k represents any real numbers. So that means if you can rewrite a certain quadratic equation into this form x squared is equal to k, then you can use this method to solve for the roots of the equation, All right? And also, I have a question. What is something that you observed to this equation? Is there any terms or a term that is actually lacking? Anyone? All right, that is your linear term or your BX. So that is why if you encounter quadratic equations with no linear term, you can actually solve that quadratic equation by extracting square roots. So please remember that. So furthermore, there are actually three properties that we need to remember. The first property states, if k is greater than zero, then x squared is equal to k has two real solutions or roots, and they are x is equal to positive and negative square root of your k. So if this is your k and it is greater than zero, can you give me a number greater than zero? That is one, two, three, um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten to the positive infinity. If that is the value of your k, then that quadratic equation has two real solutions. Example, x squared minus four is equal to zero. What is the first thing that we need to do here? Anyone? All right, so that is to isolate your x squared or your quadratic term by moving you four to the right side of the equation. How? By adding positive four on the both sides of the equation, okay? So that would give us x squared is equal to four. So your k here is positive four and that is greater than zero. So therefore, there are two real solutions. My question is, how will you solve for the values of your x? So that is the time that we can apply the square root property. So we need to get the square root of x squared and 4. So therefore, x is equal to positive and negative 2 because the square root of your x squared is x. And the square root of your 4, that is positive and negative 2. So these two values will satisfy your original equation. Let's do the checking. So when x is equal to 2, so we need to substitute this value to the original equation, which is x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. So 2 squared minus 4 is equal to 0. What is 2 squared? That is 4. 4 minus 4, 0. So this is correct. So this is a solution. How about negative 2? So when x is negative 2, x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. That would be our original equation. So we need to substitute the x with the value of negative 2. So negative 2 squared, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So 4 minus 4 is 0. So this is another solution. So that's the reason why we have two real solutions. Questions? Okay, let's proceed. How about if your k is equal to zero? So our second property states, 
if k is equal to zero, then x squared is equal to k has one real solution or root, and that is x is equal to zero. So this is your k, right? So if this is zero, automatically there's one solution, and that is x is equal to zero. Example, x squared plus eight is equal to eight. What is the first thing that we need to do here again? That is to isolate your quadratic term x squared by subtracting 8 on the both sides of the equation. So we will have x squared plus 8 minus 8 is equal to 8 minus 8. So it will give us x squared is equal to 0. What is the value for our k? That is 0. So meaning to say if your k is equal to 0, then there is only one real solution. Because the square root of 0 is 0. So let's check. For x is equal to 0, the original uh, equation is x squared plus 8 is equal to 8. So 0 squared is 0, so 0 plus 8 is equal to 8. So therefore, this is correct. So this is a solution. Any question? So, so far, we already touched two properties. If k is greater than 0 then there will be two real solutions. If k is equal to zero, then there is only one solution. How about if k is less than zero? So our last property states, if k is less than zero, then x squared is equal to k has no real solutions or roots. So if this is your k and it, and it has a value less than 0, like negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5 to the negative infinity, then such quadratic equation has no real solutions or roots. Example, x squared plus 7 is equal to 3. So what is the phrasing that we need to do here? That is to isolate your x squared and move 7 to the right side of the equation. How? By subtracting 7 on the both sides of the equation. So x squared plus 7 minus 7 is equal to 3 minus 7. So that would give us x squared is equal to negative 4. The value of our k here is negative 4 and it is less than 0. So therefore this equation has no real solutions. So furthermore, if we need to really simplify and get the roots of this equation, we can actually apply the square root method. So the square root of x squared is x, and our roots would be positive and negative square root of negative 4. I know it's really impossible to really think of a number that the, if you will multiply it by itself, will give us a negative product. That's the reason why in mathematics, um, square root of negative 1 is represented by the small letter i. So same process in simplifying radicals. So since our radicand is negative 4, and 4 is a perfect square, we can actually try to get the product of square root of 4 and square root of negative 1. So therefore, the roots would be positive negative square root of 4 multiplied by square root of negative 1. And that is x is equal to positive negative 2i because the square root of 4 is 2. So these are imaginary roots. And again, please take note of this. This one. Square root of your, I mean square root of negative 1 is represented by small letter i. So at this point, um, I am positive that you already know the properties in solving quadratic equations by extracting square roots. Again, the first property states if k is greater than 0, there will be two real solutions. If k is less, um, is less than 0, then we will have imaginary roots or no real solutions. If k is equal to 0, then we have one solution, and that is x is equal to 0. So at this point, how about if you are given equations, or I mean an, an equation, where in the leading coefficient of the quadratic term is greater than 1? 
Example, 5x squared minus 80 is equal to 0. Again, what is the first thing that you need to do here? Anyone? Okay, same process. You need to isolate 5x squared and move 80 to the right side of the equation. How? By adding 80 on the both sides of the equation. So that would be 5x squared minus 80 plus 80 is equal to 0 plus 80. And that would give us 5x squared is equal to 80. So do you have any idea to cancel 5 here? So we need to divide both sides by 5. That is correct. So that is the reason why 5x squared divided by 5 is x squared. And on the right side, that would be the quotient of 80 and 5. So that would give us x squared is equal to 16. So this is the form of a quadratic equation that can be solved by extracting square roots. So since your k is 16 and it is greater than what? Greater than 0, then automatically what you will think, this equation has two real solutions because 16 is greater than 0. So by applying the square root property, so x is equal to positive negative square root of 16. And that is x is equal to positive negative 4. So for us to double check that these um, values will satisfy, uh, satisfy the equation, let's do the checking. First, we need to substitute this value to the original equation, which is 5x squared minus 80 is equal to 0. So your x here is positive 4. So what is the square of positive 4? That is 16. So the product of 5 and 16, that is 80, 80 minus 80 is equal to 0. So therefore, positive 4 is one of the solutions. Next, negative 4. So again, we will substitute this value to the original equation. 5x squared minus 80 is equal to 0. Next, you need to get the square of negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. 16 times 5 is 80. 80 minus 80 is 0. So when x equals to negative 4, it satisfies the original equation. So therefore, there are two solutions or real solutions on this equation. So at this point, I have prepared an exercise for you to answer. No worries, it's only one problem. So try and solve this quadratic equation by extracting square roots. So that is quantity r minus 2 squared minus 64 is equal to 0. So you can actually post your answers in the comment section. So to wrap up this session, you can now able to solve quadratic equations by extracting square roots. So again, this is me, Sir Jiggs. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell at the bottom to receive notifications about my new videos. Thank you for watching and see you in my next tutorial. Have a great day.